I'm Margaret Skoog, the Clinical Nurse Specialist for the Emergency Departments at Swedish Medical Center. And I'm Stacia Fisher, the Senior Clinical Program Manager for Providence's Telepsychiatry Program. We're here today to talk to you about care of patients with suicidal ideations in the emergency department. In the emergency department, we have three primary components to caring for patients experiencing suicidal ideations. First, we must identify the patients. This can be through a behavioral health related chief complaint or through the use of the Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale Screener. If we identify a patient as experiencing suicidal ideations, a more formal risk assessment must be conducted. Finally, all patients experiencing suicidal ideations who are being discharged to a lower level of care must have a safety plan completed. In EPIC, screen patients for suicidal ideations per your hospital policy. Your hospital may require you to screen all patients, or they may only require you to screen patients with a behavioral health chief complaint. Screening occurs in the triage navigator using the CSSRS located under Suicide Risk Screen. When completing the CSSRS, you will note that it automatically creates a risk level. Based on this risk level in your hospital's policy, you will need to implement mitigation strategies, which could include a survey of the room and removing items such as sharps or those considered to be ligature risks. Other mitigation strategies can include having a patient safety attendant or sitter observing the patient, obtaining patient belongings and performing a search, and providing meals with safer options for utensils and dishware. Follow your hospital's policy on required mitigation strategies. If your patient answers yes to any of the screening questions when using the CSS, RS, and triage, a more comprehensive risk assessment using the questions in the CSS, RS risk assessment tool is indicated. Depending on your facility's workflow, this assessment may be completed by the RN or a mental health professional. Patients need to be reassessed at an interval determined by your hospital's policy and as needed if there is a significant change in their condition. If your patient will be discharged from or to a lower level of care, it is important to document a safety plan. We have created smart phrases in EPIC for you to use. The patient should be providing the information for the safety plan, and this should be a collaborative process with the care team. To document your safety plan, open up the notes in EPIC. Add a new note and choose the note type. Within the note, you can type dot, suicide. I will choose the suicide prevention detailed note. This is going to give you a template for the patient safety plan. Within this template, you can check the appropriate boxes. You can also add additional information as needed. Be sure to capture how the patient is going to make their environment safer. Select personal warning signs or triggers for the patient to be aware of. And also check coping strategies, or things that help the patient get through when they're having a difficult time. Protective factors are also an important part of the safety plan. Engage the patient in discussion around what things are important to them. Identify who can support that patient and add their contact information. Also document any follow-up or counseling appointments. Crisis information is listed in step six and this 24-hour National Suicide Prevention Lifeline can be used by the patients after discharge. Additional resources are below. And in step seven, you can document the most important thing that the patient has identified is worth living for. You can also add your patient's safety plan to their discharge instructions and 
to their FYI. Copy the note. For discharge instructions, we're going to go back to the ED Navigator. Scroll down to discharge instructions. And paste your note here. We can also add this safety plan to the FYI by going to the FYI section, adding a new flag, choosing suicide risk safety plan as the flag type, and pasting the plan into the FYI. Documenting the safety plan in the FYI flag will allow the information about that patient safety plan to follow them through multiple episodes of care and will be viewable to both inpatient and outpatient teams to help support that patient. Thank you all for your time and attention to patient safety today.